Hi, I'm Nicola Cairncross. Welcome to my podcast. This is where we talk about entrepreneurship, digital marketing, being a digital nomad, and much, much more. I really hope you enjoy the show. A little wooden box. Opportunities often arise from the most unexpected places. Sometimes it takes a shift in perspective to uncover hidden treasures right before our eyes. This lesson is illustrated through a personal story about discovering a forgotten treasure in an old wooden box, a tale that underscores the importance of resourcefulness and action taking. When faced with financial uncertainty after a recent redundancy combined with an imminent new baby, my husband and I searched for any possible assets to tide us over. One day, after my asking if we had anything, anything at all we might sell, he brought down a carved wooden box from the attic filled with share certificates inherited from his aunt. Although those shares had been long forgotten and deemed worthless, after some research they turned out to be worth several years of frugal living expenses. This discovery was a turning point. I immediately set to work learning how the stock market worked and how to trade shares and to be able to tell when was a good time to buy or sell. By selling slowly and carefully, the proceeds from a couple of the investments got us through the next year, while my husband was looking for work and I was looking after our toddler and second baby. Similarly, when Bitcoin came along and I was considering if now was a good time to buy, this was back in very early 2017, because of my charting skills, I was able to confidently buy at $786 per Bitcoin. Remember, you didn't have to buy a whole one. You could just buy bits of a Bitcoin and ride the bull market up to 20,000. That was around Christmas Day. I remember that Christmas, I sat and made all my nieces and nephews buy £100 worth. Although I was not able to time the very top of the market, who can, I knew enough that to get some profits out as close to the top as possible, and then retain much of the value I'd accumulated in the rest. I was then able to repeat that feat the next two times Bitcoin dropped to $3,000 over the next few years. It's currently up around $67,000. That little wooden box taught us to be resourceful, to always look for hidden assets and to reevaluate what we consider valuable. Here are five tips to help you uncover and maximize hidden opportunities. One, inventory your assets. Regularly review your physical and intellectual assets. You might find something you've overlooked that holds significant value. Two, stay informed. Keep up with market trends and changes. What might seem insignificant today could become valuable tomorrow. Three, ask questions. Don't hesitate to ask questions about old possessions or forgotten investments. Their value might surprise you. Four, leverage knowledge. Educate yourself about various investment opportunities. The more you know, the better you can assess potential assets. Five, be open to change. Sometimes what you need isn't a new asset, but a new perspective on existing ones. Stay flexible and open-minded. Following our discovery, I dived straight into learning more about share investment and trading. This was not just about immediately financial relief, although it did offer that, but about expanding our financial knowledge and skills. The recommended reading from that time is The Zulu Principle, Making Extraordinary Profits from Ordinary Shares by Jim Slater. Two, The Armchair Investor. A Do-It-Yourself Guide for Amateur Investors by Bernice Cohen. Perhaps read that one first. Three, The Bitcoin Standard, The Decentralized Alternative to Central Banking by Saifedean Amos. The story of the little wooden box teaches us that opportunities are everywhere. We just need to be willing to look and then to see them. By staying resourceful and continuously learning, you can uncover hidden treasures in your own life and business. Keep your eyes open and be prepared to seize unexpected opportunities. Whatever happened to my Bitcoin? Oh, sadly, I lost it in a boating accident. This post was inspired by one of the 25 lessons in my new book, A Better Entrepreneur. Strong Shoulders. We often feel like we need to reinvent the wheel, but here's a secret. You don't have to. Learning from those who came before you can save you time, money and a lot of headaches. Let's talk about standing on the shoulders of giants and how it can elevate your business, featuring inspiring stories from successful individuals who have embraced this technique. 
The phrase standing on the shoulders of giants means using the insights and achievements of those who have already done the hard work. It's about recognizing that you don't have to start from scratch. By studying successful entrepreneurs, you can learn what worked for them and what didn't. This insight is invaluable. I use books as my shoulders of giants and increasingly nowadays YouTube videos. You really can learn anything on YouTube, but more than that, you can get inspiration. Even if you're not watching a business video, you can learn how to become a better entrepreneur by noticing the traits of those who are successful in other areas. As is the way with great mentors, you can often hear their voice in your head if you ask them what to do in any given circumstance. I often hear Gary Vaynerchuk in my head going, nobody cares when I'm feeling a bit victim-like. You can watch people going through adversity alone. Alone, Alaska. That's a good TV series. You can learn patience with breaking seemingly insurmountable tasks down into smaller parts. There's a video on YouTube called Survival Skills. I highly recommend it. And you can watch people becoming better, more effective, kinder people. Justin Rhodes. Even while battling with adversity like five children, house fires and chronic pain. Start by identifying leaders in your field. Read their books, listen to their podcasts and watch their interviews. Absorb as much as you can. When you see a strategy that resonates, adapt it to fit your business. Remember, it's not about copying. It's about learning and evolving. One, identify your giants. Who are the leaders in your industry? Make a list and start researching their journeys. Two, learn from mistakes. Giants have made plenty of mistakes. Learn from them so you don't have to repeat them. Three, adopt strategies. Take what works and adapt it to your business. Customize their strategies to fit your unique needs. Four, network. Don't be afraid to reach out. Connect with these leaders on social media. Attend their webinars. Comment on their videos. And even ask for mentorship. Five, stay humble. Always stay open to learning. No matter how successful you become, there's always some, something new to learn and new giants to learn from. Real life examples. One, Pat Flynn, founder of Smart Passive Income. Pat Flynn openly acknowledges how he has learned from other successful entrepreneurs. When he started his online business journey, he immersed himself in learning from industry leaders like Tim Ferriss and Gary Vaynerchuk. Flynn's success with Smart Passive Income was built on the foundational knowledge he gained from these giants, which he then adapted to fit his own style and audience. Two, Chris Guillebeau, author and founder of The Art of Nonconformity. Chris Guillebeau is another example of an entrepreneur who has benefited from learning from others. He travelled to every country in the world and used the experiences and stories of people he met to shape his entrepreneurial to shape his own entrepreneurial ventures. Guillebeau's popular book, The $100 Startup, draws heavily on the principles and success stories of other small business owners who started with minimal investment. Three, Sarah Blakely, founder of Spanx. Sarah Blakely often credits her success to the lessons she learned from others. Before founding Spanx, she read countless business books and biographies of successful entrepreneurs. She was particularly inspired by Richard Branson's autobiography, which encouraged her to think outside the box and take risks. Blakely's willingness to learn from others' experiences helped her navigate the challenges of starting a business and ultimately led to her success. Four, Howard Schultz, former CEO of Starbucks. Howard Schultz, the man behind the global expansion of Starbucks, openly acknowledges how he stood on the shoulders of giants. Before transforming Starbucks, Schultz travelled to Italy and studied the culture of Italian espresso bars. He observed how they served as community hubs and brought this concept back to the United States, shaping the Starbucks experience. Schultz's ability to learn from the Italian coffee culture was pivotal in creating a unique business model that set Starbucks apart. Recommended reading. 1. Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss a compilation of tips, routines and habits from some of the world's most successful people. Two, Mindset, Marketing and Money by Nicola Cairncross. Insights on starting, building and running a successful business from a collection of interviews with some of my most respected entrepreneurs. Three, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, a classic on success principles from studying the habits of wealthy individuals. 
Standing on the shoulders of giants is about leveraging the experiences of those who have paved the way. Learn from their successes and failures. Adapt their strategies to suit your business. Stay curious, stay humble and keep learning. This blog post was inspired by one of the lessons in my book, A Better Entrepreneur. And now I'm going to share with you the audio of one of my recent Facebook lives where I go through the what's worked, what hasn't and what's changing technique that I use every week for my own business. I really hope you enjoy it. So welcome back. It's Nicola Cancross here. It's Friday morning and I'm going to go for my what's hopefully going to become usual, what's worked, what hasn't, and what's changing. I got quite a lot of good feedback last week. There was a couple of people on the call and a couple of people have reached out afterwards. So that's really cool. Do play along if you want to. So this is how you do it. You do, you sit down quietly and you do a bit of journaling, ideally. Then you write down what's worked this week, what hasn't, and what's changing. And the best thing about it is the what's changing bit takes away the judgment, uh, takes away the the worry that you're not good enough. It's just a question. It's nice and cold and unemotional. And it's all practical about what you're going to do differently this week. So what's worked for me? Well, I've had my son and his girlfriend staying this week. It's a bit personal one to start with. And I've managed not to put my foot in it so far, as far as I'm aware. (laughs) They've gone away to um, Tropical Pressure Festival this weekend, along with my daughter and about 10 other people. So they were having a lovely time down there. And uh, I've managed, I think, not to say anything that brought the mood down (laughs) that's what that was his specific request so I think I've managed to do that on a personal level generally and also a work level I feel better I feel lighter since the election I feel lighter I feel less responsibility to try and save people or tell people things that they think they ought to know um I think it's the teacher in me you know I I was once when I did the Myers-Briggs I was uh, diagnosed diagnosed I was (laughs) profiled as the teacher and that is one of the things I love to do I love to learn things and then teach them to other people so when I learn things about what's going on in the world I feel a compulsive need to teach them or tell people um and I've just let go of that now I've just there's nothing I can do I got you know people have done what they've done people are going to do what they do people are never going to listen to people who think they know better because they know they think they know better so I've sort of let go of that and I feel much uh, lighter and freer for it so on the work front, I've hold I've heard from an old client. Um, he's only six or seven months old. <laughs> he's not he's not actually, he's in his 30s, but uh, I haven't worked with him for a little while because he's been finishing his book and it's on Bitcoin. And I'm really excited to be working on that with him soon. So uh he set up a call this week, um, and that will go into the what did what didn't work section. So let's have a look at what else has worked. Um I suddenly had the genius idea. I was getting my old swagger and soul channel going again. And I suddenly had the genius idea to use, see if I could use Google AdWords. And it came to me when I was offered the chance to boost the video. Don't fall for it, people. Um, That's a bit like Facebook boost. It just goes out to whoever they think would be a good idea. But what I did do was go to my Google ad account and um, resurrect that and get a conversion campaign going for views and I was able using doing that to be able to specify and it was quite easy to set up actually uh I was able to specify which country it was shown in and what demographic of people it was shown in and what interests they had and the best thing about that is that you can um give AdWords information already you can say I want it to be like people who visit my website or I want it to be people who are interested in these things on YouTube uh, so it's really pretty good and I'm getting uh, views for 10p 10p that's unbelievable normally you can't get a click or a view for um, under pound fifty. so it's unbelievably cheap so if you've got a YouTube channel or yeah, you know, or you're thinking about having one um, for business particularly that's a great way of boosting the videos that you want to get give them a bit of a leg up and what I found is that the um, algorithm gets all stirred up again about them and uh, they carry on showing afterwards so that's pretty good even if you just run a three-day campaign or something like that so that was something that definitely worked Um, another work thing that worked was I've finally figured out how to do page optimization in Thrive Themes, which is where you take a page that is getting a decent amount of traffic, say a sales page or an opt-in page, 
and or an offer page of some kind, and you optimize it in Thrive Themes to um, show 50% of the traffic that goes to that page to another page. You used to be able to do this with Google Analytics for free, and there was also an optimizer paid service at one point. But if you're running Thrive Themes, then you can actually do this for free. Just go into Thrive Optimizer and follow the instructions. In fact, I did have to look at a couple of videos on YouTube, ironically. But uh, it wasn't as hard. It wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. I did have to have a bit of a kit one night and then come back to it the next morning because um, doing things in the late afternoon is not good for me. That That's one of the things that doesn't work. What does work, though, is getting up early, although I have been awake since 4.45 this morning because... I heard from an old friend this week who's moving to a Spanish city. And funnily enough, one of my other really good friends is moving to the same Spanish city. That is really weird, isn't it? And they're doing it within a week of each other. So um, I felt compelled. Am I going to tell you about that something else? Uh, No, I'm going to. I'm going to do a whole live about this, I think. Yeah, I'm going to do it in a separate thing to this. I'm going to talk about the this whole weirdness and energy and all that sort of stuff and, and intuition. So watch out for the next live coming. And it's just incredible they're both going together. So what's working for me from that is, A, she got in touch, which is great. B, it gave me an opportunity to get in touch with my other friend, not that I ever need one. And C, I can feel a bit a visit to this Spanish city coming on, which would be rather good fun knowing I've got two mates out there as well. And what else worked? I can't think of anything else specifically. I was very thrilled. Oh, I, I'm working on um, many chat. I'm working on hooking up. Um, many chat with chat GPT, which will mean that anyone who interacts with my page or comments on anything will, can, will get an opportunity to interact with me, tell me a bit more about themselves, and then I can direct them to one of my um, free gifts or my books or my training programs. Because uh, what's happening is I think email is sliding again, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm going to keep it going, but it's definitely sliding compared with Messenger. And um, I know that because the way I interact with Messenger and I'm one of the oldest people I know. So (laughs) got to get got to get many chat and uh, chat GPT going together. What didn't work this week? Um, My last week's live was a bit shit, to be honest. (laughs) The lighting was terrible. And the reason that happened was because I was trying to do it against a nice backdrop, i.e. the river. And even though it was a cloudy day, it was... um, screwing up the camera on my phone and it was focusing not on me but on the river and it was also the light was all wrong and so it looked a bit fuzzy it didn't come out as clear as it could have done so I finally managed to well another thing that worked is I've worked out how to use this hopefully I am live at the moment and hopefully people can see it but if not it's on zoom it's recording I can always upload it later until I figure it out the thing with zoom is that when you go live on Zoom and you say, I want to use a custom streaming service, which is, um, sorry, then you go to your Facebook page and you start live video. And then it it gives you some information. It gives you a URL and a streaming key. And you go back to Zoom and put that URL and streaming key in and click save. And it gives you an error message page. But I think that's an error message thank you page. I think it's a thank you page that's giving the error message. And I think it's actually working even though it doesn't look like it is. But I did try to look on Facebook a minute ago, and perhaps I'm streaming, perhaps I'm not, but at least Zoom's recording, so I won't lose the whole thing. So these are little techie things are not working this week, but largely um, things are working. Let's have a look. Uh, Yeah, my author client came back. He wanted to talk, but it was only on a day when I wasn't available, sadly. Um, I think he'd forgotten that I I can't really do Thursdays because I do another three-hour call with another client. So that's a fairly regular event, and I can't miss that. So, yeah, so that was a bit shame. But he's rescheduled for next week, so that's cool. You never know if clients are going to go away again and not come back. Um, What's changing as a result of what didn't work? Well, I'm going to have another crack at figuring out this Zoom thing to um, Facebook Live. I'd like to know if it's working or not. Um, I think this is a better way to do it for me, looking straight at a decent camera with um, good light from the ring light and the window as well. And 
the background fuzzed out because one of the things that stresses me out is trying to find a good background because my flat's quite small. I've chosen to, you know, live simply. And, um, you know, I've just got a plain white wall there. It's very unattractive. I don't want people seeing all my furniture because people judge judge you on things. Can't use the river as a background because um, the lighting's all wrong. So it's better to use Zoom with the fuzzed out background. At least you can see my picture in the background, which adds a bit of colour. So, yeah. What else is changing? Well, I'm thinking about travelling some more to get some more sun because I don't know if you've noticed, but something weird's going on with the weather. But we won't get into that. I'm just going to go to other places where they're not doing th- things that, to make the weather go weird. And uh, the other thing is I need to get more traffic to my sales pages in order to um, get the optimization going. Because you, statistically speaking, you need at least 100 visitors to each version. And you only need to have one difference on the, the second version of the page. So I've actually um, changed the layout so i've i've started with a layout as suggested by somebody who i follow and and like and respect and then it went against the grain so i thought no i'm going to split test with my own version and but in order for to be able to tell which version's working properly you need to have at least 100 visitors to each page and at the current rate of visitors to my website it's going to take a while. So I need to figure out how to speed that up. And it might well be that now I've dipped the toe in the water of Google AdWords again and figured out that they haven't changed it too much and I can figure out how to do it. Then I might just run some Google ads and see if I can get more traffic and see what converts better. But um, it'll be cold traffic. That's the only problem. So really, I'm sort of better to spend the money on sending traffic to my YouTube videos and then have a big prominent link to visit the website to find out more in the video or underneath the video in the description, or even better, pinned to the first comment. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what's worked. That's what didn't this week. And that's what I'm changing. So how about you? What worked for you? What 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 didn't work for you? And what can you change as a result of that? I'd love to hear. So if you are on Facebook or on YouTube or might put it up on LinkedIn if it's under 10 minutes. Doubt it, though. I do ramble on. Um, Then do tell me and uh, we can have some ideas, brainstorm some ideas for you if you'd like that. Anyway, I'll see you next Friday. You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross of NicolaCareNext.com. Well, I hope you enjoy the show today. We've got lots of resources on the website, so do come over to check them out. And by all means, feel free to book yourself into my diary at nicolacarenext.com forward slash diary. I love to talk to entrepreneurs. 